You're now tuned into the Lady Charmaine Live Show, and I'm your host, Lady Charmaine. And we have another great interview for you today. Today on the show, I have a question for you. What do you get when you mix rapper T.I., contestants, and a competition? Well, you got the grand hustle. And we have a finalist who's going to be here today to talk about the show coming up right after this. My guest today is a brand builder and all-around hustler. And she is here today to talk about the season finale of BET's hit show, The Grand Hustle. And having a chance to vie to work with T.I. Help me welcome to the Lady Charmaine Live show, Grand Hustle finalist, Miss Crystal Garner. Welcome to the show, Crystal. How you doing? <laughs> I am great, Lady Charmaine. How are you? I am good, girl. No, I know. My question is, no, how you doing in my Wendy Williams voice? Girl, what does this moment feel? feel like for you <laughs> you are a finalist finally i know uh, this moment is crazy like i don't even know how to explain it i'm like <laughs> excited nervous at the same time uh-huh now i, I do have a question though because you so gonna... go ahead go ahead no, I have a question for ahead, you. What's your question, girl? Because you know, uh, I know on Thursday night we're gonna find out who actually won. Now, did they actually did? Did they do two alternate endings, or do you guys really know who won, and you just gotta just sit on it until Thursday night until everybody find out? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, <laughs> definitely one ending. We all know the ending. Um, but sheesh, if there was two endings, that's scary, girl. I'd be nervous even more. <laughs> Cause see now, um. I remember when BT when BT did Sunday Best, they actually did two alternate endings, yes. and so that's why I was asking. So you know, so nobody really knew who won neither one of the contestants until they played their ending at the end at the finale. So I was wondering if the same thing happened. So how does it feel having to wait this long? How did you keep a secret this long without breaking your contract with BT that you won't say anything? Um, money was the motivation. The <laughs> fact that I would get sued. Yep. <laughs> I was going to say that, girl. What was a million-dollar contract? <laughs> you know, two, more like a $2 million. You really? Know? Like, mm, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, um, my lawyer was like, Crystal, you know, you can't say anything about anything. I'm like, you're right. I don't say anything. Yeah, that, that would definitely <laughs> help keep a sister's lips sealed. But, Crystal, we want to learn a little bit about Hello. you. We know that you are definitely a hustler. It really showed uh, during the show, and your personality just shined. And so I do believe that you were definitely a front runner in a lot of people's minds. But as I was reading a little more about you, um, you know, you were raised on food stamps like a lot of us was raised on food stamps. But then you had, like, five people living in a two-bedroom house, and it looked like growing up for you might have been a little rough for you. So what was it that gave you that tenacity and that drive to want to be a hustler? What was about your upbringing that brought you to this place man i'm so grateful for the struggle because i believe wholeheartedly like that is what pushed me to be a hustler that's what pushed the mindset of i don't want to be a product of my environment in this capacity i don't want to you know recreate that generational cycle of being a struggler so it motivated me. And honestly, if you really want to know the God honest truth, um, it was the opportunity I had to start going to church on my own. I, there was a church right down the block for me, and this older woman stopped me one day walking home. And I was probably about maybe 10 years mm -hmm. old, and she told me about the church, and I started going. And going there, I met so many people that were from my neighborhood, but I didn't really see them often. They were probably in a little bit you know, better parts of it. And they were doing great things in their life. So I had the opportunity to see powerful, amazing people that were God-fearing and had a strong foundation. And I used that as my motivation that I can be that person and I can be that person for my family. But honestly, the struggle taught me how to grind, have to go after whatever I want. So I'm grateful for it. Listen, I ain't got no problem and I'm not afraid to share my story because I know there's a lot of people that came from the same way I came right. and that are out here striving and making their dreams a reality. And see, the thing is, when you put Jesus in the mix, you can't beat it. When you say a church, girl, that's all you needed to say. So I'm going to give you a hallelujah and a thank you, Jesus. <laughs> 
So you oh, cannot wow. lose exactly. when you got Jesus in the mix. That's really a blessing. So, you know, I know the competition, you know, was was something I'm, I'm sure it was a great anticipation. So when you stepped on the set, knowing that you were now a contestant to vie for a job working with T.I., what was it like when you first stepped foot on that set? Man, yo, when I walked in that mansion, first of all, I ain't ever seen anything like that in my life. This house was huge, enormous, beautiful. But, you know, yo, it's, it's crazy because I was the last person in a house. That's funny, I'm a finalist. But I was the last person in the house, so I ended up on a really small twin bed and the, the smallest bathroom. And you know what? It didn't bother me at all because... I was like, hey, I came from the struggle. I can mm -hmm. sleep in this room, mm -hmm. this small bed, and I'm still going to go hard. And for me, I think my mindset in that moment was like the only competition in this house is myself. Right. So I did not allow everything else that was going on in that house to deter me from my goals and my aspirations with the competition. Who did you feel at first? Because, you know, people size one another up. You know, you get to the house and all the contestants looking at one another, you kind of size one another up. In the beginning, who did you think was going to be your biggest competition? For real, my biggest competition, and I say it till this day, other than myself, if I had to choose an individual, right. it would be Jonathan because Jonathan and I, we're friends, and he knows my work ethic. We worked together in New York on different events. We had a podcast together for two years. Mm -hmm. He knows how hard I go and what I do in my connection. Therefore, I was nervous that if anybody, you know, could compete <laughs> with me other than myself, it would be my friend. Okay, okay. So you thought it was going to be Jonathan. How did you feel when you seeing Jonathan get kicked off the show? Man, I was sad for him because I know that's my friend and he really wanted to be there. But at the same time, I was happy because I didn't want to go against Jonathan. I really did not. I've been saying it from the out. I was like, ah, I don't want to go against Jonathan. George, ah, I ain't worried about him. But, but Jonathan, man, that's my friend. That's my boy. I want to see him win as much as I want to see myself win. And you know, a lot of people underestimated George. Did you expect George to get as far as he did? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. I really did because it's TV. Right. And when he was doing his antics in the household, I was like, hmm, this makes sense. You're over here playing both sides because a lot of stuff was edited out. So one second he would be super mean and crazy and get under our skin. And then the next second act like he's doing a lot of work. So I'm like, hmm, why is he doing this? Makes sense for TV, <laughs> so he can stay on. Right, right, and a lot of people do that, and, and he and it's, he stayed on. I mean, it literally got him through. What was one of your toughest challenges on the show? Uh, one of my toughest challenges was the one where I was point um, when we had to focus on the Us or Else initiative, and we were challenged to bring awareness to mass incarceration and building the mural. Um, the reason why it was super tough for me is because. It was very dear to me. My little brother is currently incarcerated. He's been incarcerated for about 11 years now for something he didn't do. But, you know, that's another conversation. <laughs> um, so <laughs> anybody want to talk to me, holla at me about that. If you, if you, if you know a way to get this figured out. Um, but for real, um, just knowing that it meant so much to my family and to my heart. To feel that would have been uh, devastating. So that was super tough for me because it was passion. It, it was it was motivated by a specific goal and not about the outcome of the show. Interesting. And and what would you think maybe was one of the simplest challenges, if there was one? <laughs> a simple challenge? Nothing was simple, girl. When I tell you, we were going <laughs> back to back with these challenges. I know y'all are watching, and it's. Every week, oh, man, I got to wait a whole week. I wish we had a whole week in between the challenges. Right, we okay. Lose every two days, that's two challenges. Hello? I'm over here like, dang, they couldn't give me some more concealer under my eyes. I look like I'm exhausted. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, there was um, a couple of people on the show like um, – was her name uh, Javi? I really liked Javi. I thought Javi was definitely uh, going to go far on the show as well. So I was really surprised when Javi actually got kicked off when she did. Because I was, I was not expecting Javi to get kicked mm -hmm. off so soon on the show. Because I, I really liked her drive yeah, you know, on the show. 
Yeah, no, she has great job drive. Javi mm-hmm. and I are still cool. A few of the cast members, we have a group chat. We're still cool people. But what um, what people don't understand, like when people ask me, remember, I don't, I didn't see what the other team was doing ever. Right. So I don't really know everyone else's work ethic and what they accomplished until now when I'm watching a show like everybody else. This is my first time seeing it. I haven't got a pre-screen of the whole season. So I never got to see what Team Grand was doing and who was their strong people and who was their weak people. All I saw was when we went to elimination and they all started yelling at each other and telling different things. And I'm like, oh, okay, I guess that's what happened. Oh, okay. So how did you how did you feel seeing yourself on the show, especially during the competitions and how you handled T.I.'s daughters? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, every time, you know, funny, I was hanging with my friends watching the last episode, and I said, oh, snap, guys, I'm on TV, you know? <laughs> it just now hit me that I'm actually on this show. But I had a great time with T.I.'s daughters, um, Zanik and Deja, they are mm-hmm. super dope. They tried it. They tried to, you know, yeah, they do did. some things and see what we would and wouldn't do. They tried it. They edited it out a lot, which is interesting. But you guys got to understand, it's 48 hours worth of footage crammed mm. into 45 minutes. And so I get it. But they had some other things. They tried it with us a couple of times. And I was like, mm. <laughs> once I figured out, once me and Gracie figured out that they were trying it, it was like, all right, we got this. I mean, we both been sororities. We, we know what this is. <laughs> and, I'm glad you mentioned, and I'm glad you mentioned that because how did you being a part of a sorority, because we know that pledging can be very grueling. It's a grueling process. So how did you think pledging prepared you for this particular competition? Well, first and foremost, I would say Alpha Kappa Alpha is a non-hazing organization. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know, when you're pursuing certain things, when you're pursuing to get in an organization, it's, it's, regardless, it's not simple. You have to get to know the girls on mm-hmm. campus. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to hang around people. You have to attend events. You have to, you know, humble yourself so that the woman will understand that you really want to be a part of this. And it's not about yourself. It's about the greater good of mankind. So I think in that process of what me and Gracie have gone through pursuing our sororities, that prepared us to deal with Things that normal people wouldn't really actually do, like, oh, can I have a pink swirly straw? I was like, a pink swirly straw, girl? Where am I finding? And you know that production ain't going to let me go that far. Right. So um, I'm going to have to figure this out real quick. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> but I think it definitely prepared me. And this mindset, when you're in an organization, a black Greek letter organization, your mindset is on a different level and your focus is di- different. And the top four we're all actually Greeks on the show. Jonathan is a Kappa. George is a uh, Alpha, as he says. I'm not sure. I got to find out background <laughs> information. I don't trust okay. him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm AKA and, uh, Gracie's a Zeta. And I was not shocked and surprised at all mm. that the, th- the four Greeks were at the top. Interesting. Now, that, now that's a pretty interesting point. Now, I wanted to know, can you tell us a little bit about the final hustle that we're going to see on Thursday night? Okay, I'll tell you a little bit about it. I'm um, <laughs> super excited for you guys to see the finale. Yes. <laughs> it's at Drea's. Um, it's an event for T.I., and mm-hmm. he is challenging both George and I to curate some type of uh, pre-concert event mm-hmm. for him as well as get some things done during the contest. I mean, during the concert. So it's very interesting because we have to hit the streets of Vegas and, you know, we don't have our personal phones, so we're on the, you know, trying to just randomly connect with people, get people to come out, get people to show up, support, pop bottles, whatever they need to do. So, <laughs> very interesting. We do see each team on the streets. We kind of, like, try to steal each other's people a little bit. It gets a little interesting. I can't wait for you to see. <laughs> now, were you guys aware that former contestants were going to be coming back to help you, or was that an, an actual surprise for you? That was actual surprise. I think I kind of figured that something like that would happen because my brain was saying, well, who's going to help me with all of this stuff in mm-hmm. Vegas? It's like, I, I can't, I'm superwoman, but I really can't do it all by right, myself. Right, right. So and I'm like, to, and me, I'm an overseer, which is very beneficial when you're competitive. Mm-hmm. So my brain is thinking of a thousand different scenarios. And my brain was saying, why would they bring random people to help me? Why wouldn't they bring back some hustlers? I'm excited when I walk in the room, though, as you can see in the commercials, because the hustlers I got 
are people I love. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I kind of love everybody. <laughs> right. But you, but know, you I did. I was very happy to see who they gave me. Because you seem to have gotten along with, with everybody. Now, it appears. So was there anybody that you didn't get along with? Or kind of like your vibe just didn't vibe on the show well behind the scenes? No, not really. Um, you know, Javi and I, they didn't show it. But there was a time when um, I went up to her because we had spoke yet. And I was just like, hey. She's like, girl, you smile too much. That's why I say nothing. I was like, girl, I always smile. She's like, but you're from New York. I said, so? That don't mean anything. I can still show smile. <laughs> And then George had the nerve to say it in the last episode, too, that I smiled too much. Hey, if that's a problem, that's a problem. But Javi and I, as soon as I went up to her, she was like, but you know what? I'm grateful that you decided to come up to me and mm-hmm. say something because I probably wouldn't have came up to you. I was like, no, I mean, we're in the same house. We're both women. We're both hustlers. Mm-hmm. I'm going to sit here and talk to you. I have no issues. We all have, we all have the same goal right now. So whatever I have to do to make sure that at least you know that regardless of what I have in this competition, I got you. I'm going to do that. Yeah, it's funny because I used to hear that all the time too, Crystal, that I smile too much. Why do you smile so much? And especially really? the people that used to say that to me the most <laughs> were people from New York. I said, like, you can't be that happy. What? <laughs> I mean, especially after I got saved, girl, because I'm, I'm a bold Christian. And I'm like, honey, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So I had Jesus joy on the inside, so I'm a really smile. You know, ain't nothing wrong with smiling. You know, sometimes Hello. people's faces look like it's going to crack if they don't smile, child. Sometimes you need to stop sucking them exactly. lemons <laughs> and just smile. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, I know you exactly. guys already know, you know who won, but what's next for, for Crystal? What else do you have on your plate? What do you look forward to? What's your next goal that you want to achieve? Well, right now I'm working on my first personal development book. Okay. Um, when I got into college, you know, that's something I really focused on because my mindset was, oh, I want to be CEO of a company. But I was like, but why? Is that my purpose in life? So I started reading a whole diff- a whole bunch of literature that focused on personal leadership development. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the uh, the rich dad, poor dad, right. the, the think and grow rich, right, um, right. seven habits of highly effective people, the alchemists, you know. So I read all these different books. So it's, I think it's my turn to give a tool to young people and any, actually anybody. But I'm making it, I say it to young people because everybody on their phone, and I want you to actually get a book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm making the seven chapters super small but super powerful, like mm-hmm. Who Moved My Cheese, which is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. So I want people to have a tool that they can use as motivation to go after their goals, their dreams, because at the end of the day, you really only live one life. Drake was right when he said that. You live one life, mm-hmm. and do you mm-hmm. want you know, when it comes down to it, that you didn't do what you wanted to do and you wasted all your years. So my book is Survival Guide of a Hustler, and that's what I'm focused on because it's my turn to pay it forward. All right now, and my last question for you, why do you want to work for (laughs) TI, and what do you feel you can bring to the table? Man, why do I want to work for TI? He's TI. No, seriously, (laughs) this guy still to this day, I'm going to tell you something that I don't think anybody knows. So when I was going um, to the premiere of the show, The Grand Hustle in Atlanta, mm-hmm. I'm walking through the airport, and I heard somebody say, Crystal, it was this deep accent, <laughs> and I'm in New York, and I'm confused. Like, who is calling my name while I'm on security line? And I turn around, and it's T.I. And you would think after, sh- yeah, you know, we randomly ended up in this, <laughs> the same flight. And I just turned around, and it was just so crazy because it's been months since the show and we can't I can't communicate with nobody and I just heard his voice and it still sent chills you would think after all these weeks of working with him mm-hmm. it still sent chills that I was in his presence wow. and I believe that in order for you to get to where you got to go you got to surround yourself with people that are in that place and mm-hmm. T.I. is one of those people right. and he's a multimedia mogul so why not be around and in his space. So that's why I definitely want to work for him. And if I were to be the person that wins on Thursday night mm-hmm. on being T uh-huh. Central, make sure uh-huh. you tune in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I truly believe <laughs> I truly believe that it's the year of the woman and if I'm the winner, it's time to show that we actually can have a place in the hip hop world mm-hmm. on that side. You know, I look at Karen Civil she is absolutely amazing, and she's getting things done with different brands. And I think it's time to continue to bring us, our beautiful, melanated woman, up 
and working with our talented melanated men and getting the thing that we need to get done in the hip hop industry, which is motivating our young people. Mm-hmm. Oh, it sounds like you got the job, girl. Look, 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 look like you got it. Look like you already got your mission and everything. I know you're not going to say nothing, though, but I ain't, I ain't going to tell nobody, Crystal. I promise. If you just told me if you, I ain't going to tell nobody. <laughs> girl, it's just me and you. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, sure. And all of your millions of listeners. Uh-huh, girl. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> well, Crystal, girl, it was truly a pleasure <laughs> having you on this show. And I definitely wish you the best. And I want to remind the audience to make sure that you tune in this Thursday night to BET 9, 10 Central or 10, 9 Central on BET. And if you catch it, yep, yep. if you're in California and if you have satellite, then you're going to be catching it at 6. <laughs> so don't forget because we get we get a chance to catch it three <laughs> hours early which is really a blessing but girl i really do wish you the best i know it's going to be really good the show has been captivating and ti of course he looked like he is a great leader that's the one thing i definitely picked up from him so again girl thank you so much for coming on the show and i will definitely be watching on thursday night thank you you're welcome and have a blessed day <laughs> bye-bye bye-bye And again, I want to remind you guys to be sure to catch the grand hustle. This girl, she got a hustle like nobody's business. If you haven't watched the show, make sure you go back and make sure you go go back on your demand so you can catch up to find out. She, I I, I think Crystal won. I ain't going to lie to you. I think Crystal won. (laughs) But she ain't going to tell me. But you know what? All bets are on Crystal. It is definitely a great show to watch. Make sure you tune in Thursday, 10, 9 Central right there on BET. And do not forget, if you're going to be joining me tonight for Lady Charmaine, Main's night out at the movies. We're going to be going to see Kevin Hart's new movie. It's called Night School. Look forward to seeing you. And don't forget to go to the Lady Charmaine page because I'm going to give you an opportunity to see two movies. You're going to see the movie The Hate You Give and also Tyler Perry's Nobody's Fool. So make sure you stop by LadyCharmaineLive.com and make sure you sign up if you want to join me at the movies. See you guys later. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>